I want to share with you a project that we've been working on here at Zite, and that's our VS Code extension. It's called Web Scraping Copilot, and you can go ahead and get it from the marketplace on VS Code right now, install it, and give it a go, and we would really value your feedback. What it does is it helps you build your scrapey projects out by uh, being able to generate parsing logic for you in your scrapey page objects. If you're not used to page objects, I'll explain it all as I go along, but I wanna show you how I've been using it and give you an idea of how you can use it and you know, see how you get on. So I have a blank folder here and I'm just gonna create my project. Now I'm using Scrapey, Scrapey Poet, as I said. I'm also using a few others. I'm gonna be utilizing the Zite API for this. I'm also using Price Parser, which is an open source um, package that we've created, which you can use and kind of does what it says. So now I have this uh, created, I'm gonna activate my virtual environment and then I'm gonna start my Scrapey project. Now the extension will work with new Scrapey projects and it, re it requires the page objects to run because when it generates the code, it generates the page object for you. I'll show you all of that. Now I'm gonna do Scrapey Gen Spider to get a simple spider up and running. Uh, and I'm gonna change a few settings. Before I do that, I wanna explain that with the extension that we've built, it runs its own MCP server locally and it has a lot of instructions in there to help you with the setup of your Scrapey project, your Scrapey Poet project. Now, if you don't have it installed, for example, it will tell you if you don't have the settings set up correctly, it will tell you. However, I've used this quite a lot now, so I do this manually. So there's a few different ways you can go about this. First thing I'm gonna do is create a new folder called pages, which is where my page objects are gonna live. And I'm gonna create my init.py to make this a Python module so I can import in and out from it. Now when we come to my settings, I'm gonna change a few things here. Add-ons we're gonna need is Scrapey Poet add-on. This is gonna do all of the configuration for us. And as I said earlier, I'm using Scrapey Zite API as well. It's up to you if you wanna use this or not, the extension is not dependent on it. Then we need our Scrapey Poet Discover and this is gonna be a list and it's our base.pages that we just created, base.pages. So this is essentially set the setup for these add-ons that we need. Now I'm gonna change a few of the other basic Scrapey project settings. Now you can prompt the agent to help you build out your item if you want to. I prefer to create my item myself and then go from there with the, uh, with the web scraping co-pilot. So I'm gonna import adders, which is my preferred method for um, Scrapey items now, and we have some information here. I'm gonna remove uh, stock, but we will keep the rest there. So I have my class. Now what I can do is start to prompt the agent with our MCP and instructions to help build out the rest of this project. Now I'm not even going to need to go and have a look at the website. It's gonna do it all for you. I'll show you what I mean when I get going. What I'm gonna do is just grab a URL whilst we're here. Right, so let's get started over here. Let's move this a bit over. now. What I'm gonna do is change it from agent to web scraping, which is a new mode that we have. I'm gonna select what model I want to use. I've had good success with GPT-5 mini, um, but the best ones so far for me are the higher end ones. I'm gonna use Gemini Pro here. That's worked quite well for me. However, whatever you wanna do though, you can, in, you can use your own LLMs. If you have an API key, there's a way to set that up. Or if you want to, you know, I'm using a premium model here. As I said, it works well with GPT-5 mini as well. So let's start uh, prompting our way to success. So let's say uh, create a page object for the item, product item and create, uh, and I'll just start there. Now, this should give it a to-do list. Um, and it's gonna check the status of everything. So when I talked about Scrapey Poet at the start, when I said, you know, it needs to make sure that you're all set up, it's done that here, it's checked that here. So, you know, you have to PyTest installed, it's all set up exactly. So I'm gonna give it some URLs. Here's a sample URL. I'm only gonna give it one. You should really ideally give it two or three. So I've given it the URL and it's saying it's gonna use our item, which is correct. Do we wanna do it, create the page object in our pages directory? We do, so I'm gonna hit yes. And this is gonna go ahead and like download the URL, download the HTML from the URL, save it into the fixtures that we can then use PyTest to test our scraping logic, our passing logic against. So, we, so we've got an empty page object. I'm just gonna have a quick look at this here. So what this is, is the page object and it has a class with the handle URLs. It's returning our item 
and it has the fields from our item that we set up here ready to be populated and it's this that the AI is going to create and fill in for us which is going to pass all the information now it's saying should I create uh, create a uh, test fixture for the sample URL yes we want that that's how we're going to work through and generate the code that we need so we can see it's come through uh, under my general scrapey project so however you set your scrapey project up to download the um, HTML from the websites that you're scraping it will use that to do so like I said I'm using the API so it's all through there now it's saying do we want to proceed with uh, updating the test fixture with the expected data and implement the extraction logic which is exactly what we want I'm gonna hit yes it's gonna take a little bit of time now to work through this I found that depending on what model you use it's quicker and you get better results. It's going to prompt me to say we want to use the MCP server. Now, of course, you can allow it to use this without having to have the interruption. But for me, I like to have it there just you know, as a break point. So when I'm explaining what I'm doing, I can see it come up and I can tell. So if we click on this, we can see it's taken our input uh, and it's determining the expectation. So I'm going to come back over to the fixtures. And if we look at the input and I move this out of the way a little bit and we'll see this is the actual HTML for the page that I gave it the sample URL and the output here is the output from our item and the page object so they're all linked and at the moment they're all null so through the MCP server which is run locally which comes with the extension I can actually show you the um, the tooling here here we have update page code expectations and you can read through this and it explains uh, what it all does and the instructions for the um, for the agent there so this is going to go ahead and um, figure out what information should be here and we've done it now so we're going to run tests uh, yes so it's going to update the output so we should see the correct product information appear now here and then it's going to use that to work out the selectors update the and update the uh, page object so let's let this run there we go that looks good to me we can we can uh, clarify that that's fine and we also have the updated page object you see it's using price parser it knows that it's there so we can use it i'm gonna hit keep on all of this we have a quick look through looks good to me i'm gonna hit allow and we're gonna let our tests run we can see that all of our tests passed now let's make this work properly like a spider so i'm going to go to my spider go to products and we'll go ahead and get rid of all of this because we don't need this we want to say that our URL, which is going to be a string in this case, and paste that in here. That's our start URL. And we want to do async def because we are using modern Scrapey, which is async and await. And the start here, we want to yield the request. And our callback needs to be self.pass. And I'm going to call this pass book. I'm going to import in my product item up from up here. So we'll do from base.items. We're going to import in our product item. And now we can have our async def pass book. We don't want that. We want it to look like this. We want to pass this in here. So then we can say our item is that. So we can yield our item out. So very, very simple spider just to do this. And then let's run scrapey crawl products and run our spider. It's going to run away. And we should down here somewhere have the information. Here we are. So you can see product item here. And this will match what actually was in our page object, what was in the output JSON, and you know, we've scraped this directly from the page. We ran our tests, we know that they are passing. Now obviously more URLs that use the sample, more tests you create, the more accurate the air the agent can be in creating the passing logic. But you can see right there that I didn't have to look at any HTML myself. I didn't have to go through and find any HTML selectors or anything like that. It was all done automatically using our extension as a guide through for the agent. So let's go ahead and create another one because you know we don't just scrape one page, we're going to scrape multiple. So I'm going to create a new item. And this is going to be a category item. There will be a um, book URLs, which will be a list, then a next page URL, which will be a string. So now I've created this. What I want to do is I want to have a new page object for it. Now, generally speaking, I recommend uh, creating a new chat when we're doing this because we want it to you know, um, concentrate on this and not worry about 
the other page object. So I'm going to say create a new page object for the item category item uh, in a separate pie file in the pages directory. Use the URL. Oh, and I need to grab my other one here. Use the URL as a sample. Create fixtures and update code. So I'm going to try and see if I can get it to just do as much in one go as possible. So you know, it might be a bit quicker for us. Uh, again, it's going to check the status because obviously we're starting it process from the beginning again. But you know, it should blitz blitz through this nice and quickly. I'm going to update my spider whilst it's doing this. So we'll import our category item. Then instead of pass book here, we'll have pass category. And we need to uh, create that here, not like that. Thank you. Oh, you can see now it's creating the fixtures, which looks good to me. Uh, async def pass category, like so. Right, so that looks about right to me. I'm going to allow it to use the MCP server. This isn't right though. I need the response here because I don't want to re yield a new request. I want to do response dot follow all dot follow. Sorry, because you know that's going to make sure that the URLs are formatted correctly because it knows what the page looks like. There we are. Cool. So now I've set my spider up, and you can clearly see how easy it is to make quite a generic spider. If we were scraping lots of different book websites, they would still come under the product item and the category item, right? So they would still fit. And as long as your schema fits into those items, which I'm assuming it would do if you, you know, want all the data from those websites to be together and formatted properly, we would just need to create new page objects for each of those sites that fit into that. And with the um, extension here doing all of that work for you, it's very easy to create multiple page objects with one spider and make your workflow much, much quicker. And again, we can run the tests whenever we like to make sure that we're still testing properly. Well, we could regenerate the fixtures if we think the website has changed. So we could go ahead and do that anytime you get an error or you want to rework your selectors and get it to redo it all for you and then update the tests, update the output, update the selectors, and then carry on running your code without any manual intervention from you other than you know asking it to recheck and redo this redo the selectors and the fixtures so that's the real benefit of having it like this having all the logic split out and the ability to do that with pytest i'm going to click keep so uh keep that as well and it looks like we've updated our thing now it didn't create this in a new file for me unfortunately even though i did ask that so that's one thing that we would want to do slightly differently it's best practice to keep your page object classes in separate files. You can see we're still passing all of our tests here. So I, without actually you know, looking at anything, I'm just gonna clear this up and I'm gonna run it again. And I'm gonna do O for my output dot JSON. And we should now, oh, I didn't change the uh, URL there. Again, okay, that's my fault. So we need to actually update the URL that our spider's starting from, because you know, otherwise it's not gonna find what it's looking for. Okay, and let's give that a go. We see it's found loads of different pages, it's zipping through. And if I come to my output, that was my failed attempt, which is why it looks like that. I should have 30 something books here with their price, SKU, and the information that I've selected. Again, I've done all of this. I haven't written any passing code myself, but I've remained in control in my environment. I've remained in control with the, of the code. If I didn't like the look of any of this passing code, I could get it to regenerate it or remove pieces that I don't want. I remain in control. I have code that I can test. You know, I can test this with my with PyTest. I can test it to make sure that it still works. I can regenerate the fixtures with sample URLs anytime I like. Just prompt the agent to do so, and it will get you those, and go from there. So you can see how easily this can be turned into something that can save you so much time when you're scraping data like this. So please go ahead and come on VS Code. Download the extension, 
give us feedback. There's uh, a link to the GitHub issues where you can provide direct issue feedback for us and let me know what you think. You know, if you have, if you give it a go, write a comment under this video, I'll monitor it or reach out to uh, reach out to us on, on LinkedIn or anywhere you like, anywhere you can find Zai or myself and let us know how you get on and what you think.